Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can bake out cavity maps, which are sort of like grunge maps, and ambient occlusion maps within Blender 2.8. So here I am and I have a tree man model that I did for Sculpt January. And if I move around, I'm at Eevee at the moment and it's got a normal map plugged into it so you can see all the bumps and lumps. Here's the high poly, if I click on that. And there's not a lot of difference. You'll notice that the low poly is slightly thicker because I'm being a bit naughty, what I've done is I've taken my low poly and just pushed it outside the high poly. So instead of making a whole new cage, I've just pushed my low poly to make sure it's outside of my high poly so that I don't need a cage. That can distort your model, as you can see, there's the high poly, which is probably a bit better, and there's the low poly. But for speed's sake, I just quickly pushed out the low poly. And that's also to show you that you can do that as well. You don't have to go through the process of making a cage as long as your low poly and high poly don't overlap. So your low poly is outside of your high poly. So I'm going to turn off my lights layer and come out of rendered mode. And here you can see that the high poly, there's a tiny bit of it sticking through the low poly there, but that's where I can just put my ray distance up slightly. You can also see I'm going to get a few glitches up the top here but I'm not going to worry too much about those because they're seen from about this sort of distance so I'm going to roughly do it. Again, this is to give you an example of the types of detail you have to go into and how careful or not careful you need to be in terms of if you're rushing a workflow. So let's start with our high poly. So there's my tree man, it's just called tree man instead of tree man HP and here's my high poly texture. So you will have to have a high poly material, sorry, for it and you'll have to set up this material and we'll be baking the color information from this one onto the low poly. So the first thing I want to do is get the cavities or the grunge areas. So the light bits uh, are the bits sticking out and the dark bits are the crevices. And in order to do that, let's just get rid of the low poly for now. So I've got my tree man selected, this is the high poly. Let's zoom in just a touch. I'm still in the EV engine, so I need to change across two cycles. This node setup doesn't work in Eevee yet, and you can only bake in cycles at the moment as well. So if I press Shift A in my node editor, or shader editor as it's called now, add in an input, and I'm going for the geometry, and in this geometry node, there's a point in a section. Now if I plug this in, at the moment it doesn't do anything. Let's uh, just go to render mode so you can see it's not doing anything. I'll have to bring my lights back actually and you can see that it doesn't do anything. But in order to make this work, you have to bring in a color ramp. So Shift A, down to Converter and Color Ramp. And let's drag that between the two. Still nothing because obviously this is uh, the information from here going into there with no changes. So if we zoom in here, we need to bring the black up to round about 0.4. And it's interesting with lots of experimentation, it always seems to be around 0.4 and the white down 2.6 and I can actually type those in. So 0.4 and 0.6. Now we can see some effect there. So if I take, or if I mute this node with M, you can see those crevices and the highlights disappear and press M on this node again. This with the Node Wrangler installed and you can see that detail in the crevices. So that's the first one I want to bake out. I'm going to set up the second one as well, which is the ambient occlusion. So Shift A, input, ambient occlusion. And this one, if I plug it in, you can see that these areas where there's deep crevices have gone very dark. I like to bake these out one at a time, then when I'm into Eevee, I can then start playing with them a bit more and even plug them into color ramps to change them once they've been baked out. I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, let's bake the pointiness node, seeing as we started off with that one. So there it is. So let's select the tree man high poly, so sort of tree man, and the tree man low poly second. I need to create a new texture, so I'm going to call this tree man cavity. They used to be called cavity maps. I suppose they still are. And I'll change it to 2048 by 2048 and remove the alpha and press OK. So I should be all set up and ready to bake as long as my object is unwrapped, but I've already unwrapped it. Come down to here, and instead of normals, we're using diffuse which is our color. I can turn off direct and indirect and all I want is the color. I've got selected to active ticked and I've got my ray distance up just a touch so that these tiny little specks will be caught. And now I should be able to press bake 
and it says there's a circular dependency for tree norms. That's because I didn't put my texture into here. There's always something I do wrong. So Shift D and I need my new texture, tree man cavity, in the node editor so it knows what to bake to. So I was lucky I didn't lose my normals. So tree man cavity. We keep this at non-color data because it is just black and white information. So now hopefully I can press bake and you can see down here if there's any errors. And that's how I knew there was a circular dependency. Okay, so there's my cavity map and you can see some of the details there. And that all looks fine. So I'll go to image, save as image. Tree man cavity. I might call this tree man cavity two so I know it's my second attempt. So now I need to get my ambient occlusion. So let's go back to the tree man, plug in the ambient occlusion, back to my tree man low poly, and I need to create a new image texture. So let's create a new one and call this tree man AO2. And I'll just duplicate this image texture with shift D and just change this to tree man ambient occlusion two. So this is what I'm baking to. If you ever need to check what you're baking to, you can go to edit mode and whatever pops up in here is your active texture and it should be what you've got selected. So back to object mode. I forgot about multi-object edit mode, so it was going into edit mode with the tree man as well, so a bit of a pause there. And again, I've got this on diffuse. Tree man high poly is selected first, tree man low poly second. So tree man high poly has the ambient occlusion, tree man low poly has the ambient occlusion map ready to bake to, and now I can press bake. And this map takes absolutely ages to bake, so I'm gonna stop recording. Okay, so after about seven or so minutes, I have a bake. And you can see it just there. Let's save that. And at this point, I'm able to go across to Eevee. So let's turn off the high poly, go across to Eevee, and let the fun begin. So plug in my normal. Isn't this lovely? Real time. Now to get these two to work together, Shift A and a mix color. So color and then mix RGB. And we actually need two of these. So let's pretend our base color is just a brown color. So I'll bring that down to a brown color about there. And so that's our starting base color. I'll put that in for now. And we've got no influence from anything else because I'm pulling back the factor. So it looks a bit like chocolate. Let's turn the roughness up just a touch. Now it looks even more like chocolate. <laughs> okay, so the ambient occlusion first. We plug the color into the base and change this to multiply. Multiply darkens. Nothing's happening at the moment because I've not introduced any of the lower node. So as I bring this up, the ambient occlusion should come out. So that's without, that's with. You can just about see it around the mouth. I've got uh, sort of quite strong lights on, so you can't see a lot. Now for this, you don't actually need the ambient occlusion turned on here. This would add ambient occlusion to our low poly object, so we could tick this, but we would need to add another ambient occlusion node into it. So there's no real need for that. As you can see, it's not making any difference. This is a bake from our high poly using cycles. So that's the ambient occlusion that's using. Okay, so we're starting to see a bit of detail in the crevices, but we want these Treeman cavity bits to work as well. So I can duplicate this color, bring it into there. And this time, let's bring this all the way down again. I'm going to plug my color into this one. So how do I want the cavity to affect? Well, I'm going to choose an overlay. Overlay will, if anything's gray, it will keep it the same. If anything's black, it will make it darker. If anything's light, it will make it lighter. So if I start bringing this up, you should start to see light bits go light and dark bits go dark. It's not having a huge amount of effect, so let's actually see what's happening with our map there. If I control shift click on there, you can see the ambient occlusion coming through and the overlay making these bright bits brighter and dark bits darker. So if I wanted to increase the detail in that, I could add another color ramp. So shift A, converter and color ramp. Bring that in and let's see what this looks like. So I've control shift clicked on that with the node wrangler installed and I can try and bring up some of the blacks a little and maybe bring the whites in. Let's see how far we can take this. So there we go, I'm getting a lot more detail from my cavity map. So let's see what that looks like in the final color image and then in the principled shader with the normals. I'm kind of preferring that actually than the principled shaders, what that's doing, but I think that's just my lighting setup. I've set up my lights for sort of extra drama, so uh, they're quite strong 
and hard lights. Now, if you wanted to color this in, you would then add a new texture. I suppose I'll show you roughly how you can do that. So a new texture here, and we'll call this um, base color, 2048 by 2048. And this time I'll change the color to something like a brown, somewhere around there, and press OK. So there's my base color. Let's just bring that in here. So I'm pressing Shift D to duplicate this and changing that to base color. Now when I plug that into my color node, I can now paint on this and it will come up in uh, the color, but I'll still have the ambient occlusion and the cavity helping me with the dark and light spots. So I can just give a really general base color to this and be aided by the ambient occlusion and the cavity. I'll try going across into text paint mode, but sometimes that's a bit glitchy when you've already set up the textures. But it looks okay at the moment. Maybe <laughs> newer versions of Blender are doing nicely. So what I've learned recently is in overlays, you can change the opacity and you can get your sort of principal shader coming through, guiding you as to what's going on. That's quite nice, that, isn't it? So I'm just on my mouse at the moment and I'll sample a color from here and we'll just maybe adapt the color slightly. That's not particularly nice, is it? Let's try a bit darker around here. Just to add some splodges so you can see the effect that's gonna have. So if I save this, base color. I'll just bring in my node editor. Ooh. Keep calling it the node editor. It's the shader editor, isn't it? So here's my color hooked up to my multiply, hooked up to my overlay, and then the principled shader with my normals coming into it. So now if I go to rendered mode, you can probably see, yep, yeah, just a touch of my color in there. It's difficult to see with all the color of the lights, but you can see a nice cavity map, nice normal map, and nice ambient occlusion as well. So I've taken the background lights out now because they were a distraction. And I've just plugged in a world texture. You can always do that, which I was forgetting, with this button here that gives you sort of a made up world environment lights. And you can see the cavity and the ambient occlusion working really well there. What you can do is use these cavity maps and ambient occlusion maps to create interesting textures. You don't have to necessarily paint. You can paint as well if you like. And I'll show you that and that whole process in the next lesson. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.